Just had to react to scram, let's not first one. Mode switch is in shutdown. APRMs are downscale. RPV pressure is 950 pounds, down slow. Reactive water level is minus 40 inches, up slow. EOP entries on low RPV level and high drywall pressure. Mode switch is in shutdown. APRMs are downscale. Reactor pressure 950 pounds, down slow. RPV level minus 25 inches, up slow. EOP entry conditions on low RPV level and high drywall pressure. That's all correct. And Bruce, all rods are in. All rods are in. Columbia and, and really all plants in the United States put a great emphasis on training because they realize that the day-to-day -day operation in the power plant really doesn't provide the necessary uh, practice of skills and tasks that might be necessary during uh, an aberrant situation, uh, some type of accident situation. Nuclear reactor operations provides both a rewarding and challenging career. Obtaining an initial operator license requires passing a rigorous 18-month training course, as well as testing approved by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Even after successfully completing the initial license phase, the training doesn't stop. Every eight weeks, operating crews are back in the classroom and the simulator for a week of training and that training will put them to the test. It's equivalent uh, to a pilot trying to practice landing a plane with multiple uh, independent failures going on at the same time. So it can get quite intense. Bruce, we've lost the startup and backup transformers. DG1, 2, and 3 are powering their buses. We have lost the startup and backup transformers. DG1, 2, and 3 are powering their buses. That is correct. Dave, verify plus one. Attention in the plant. And Attention in the plant. Pound Reactor scram due to a leak in the drywell. So it started with a, a leak uh, from the reactor coolant system into our containment structure. That's what caused the initial scram. Although it would be extremely unlikely to happen at the same time that the leak started, uh, the two independent off-site power supplies, which were referred to as the startup and the backup transformers, those were both lost. There would be no reason for those to be lost at the same time as a leak in the drywell. But it does take away uh, much of the d equipment that could have been used to help mitigate that leak. So with uh, the systems that were left, which are just the, the bare minimum emergency systems, uh, the crew was able to recover RPV level, uh, keep the core from uh, suffering any damage, the control room simulator at Columbia Generating Station is the largest in the United States. That's because Columbia's control room is the largest in the U.S. The simulator is an exact replica of the control room, allowing operators to experience training and drills just as they would in the real world, right down to the position of the waste baskets. The NRC required that each site had a plant-specific simulator built to train their operators on. Every switch, every knob, every controller, every meter must mimic exactly the way it is in the control room, from color to uh, the, the way it feels when you operate it to the response of the meters when you operate a system. We use a simulator uh, for very basic type scenarios, uh, especially when we're starting uh, folks through their training program, or just simple system operation, and uh, we slowly bring them into uh, integrated plan operation where they are able to see how operation of one particular system may have an effect on another system or another part of the plant. And uh, then we, we bring them into what we call the emergency operating procedure portion of their training where we can run, uh, we uh, sometimes affectionately called crash and burn scenarios where uh, uh, we take them uh, with all different types of uh, situations, all different types of equipment failures to uh, ensure that they're still able to mitigate the accident and bring, this, bring the plan into a safe condition. The simulator's computers and Columbia's training team have an almost limitless number of scenarios they can put the operators through. But the most valuable training stems from real-world experiences. We rely heavily on what we call operating experience and uh, just so happen to belong to a, an organization that uh, provides us with a national database, actually an international database of operating experience for all nuclear power plants. And so with that we're able to go in and look at uh, recent uh, situations that have occurred other, at other plants and uh, take and, and, and make those into learning situations for our crews uh, via the simulator in most cases. 
The intense and continuous training is a big reason nuclear energy is one of the safest industries in the country.